All right. Today I'm gonna do abs. I'm gonna start doing abs now, one day a week, since I'm on a cut. And yeah, just a full day dedic dedicated to abs, because it's a muscle group where, you know, which you need to pump and develop. But uh, moving on to the second part of my love story, whatever, call it as you like. Uh, nice warm up set. Yeah, so I was talking to a whole bunch of girls. I was messaging them <laughs> in DMs. We would meet in person, you know, spend some time. Not, not just us, but like in groups. So that was really nice. I <laughs> enjoyed that and I was like, okay, but I think I need to take it a step further because uh, I didn't really want to. Being religious, I didn't really want to, uh, what's it called, break all the rules possible. And I didn't want to get attached to a person who wasn't interested in something serious. I was, uh, in the beginning it was just all fun, but then at a certain point I was like, yeah, I'd rather just find the right person who I can marry and have no regrets. In that sense, not make any... Uh, promises or relationships and broken hearts and you know all of that I didn't want any of that my idea was from the beginning I liked all the energy but from the beginning I was like all right I want to find that person and get married and then you know just uh, happily ever after that was kind of my idea oh yeah so I was quite particular about the fact that I wanted, you know, a specific kind of person who was ready for a serious relationship and wasn't, you know, just there to F around and uh, do stuff like that. So from the get-go I was looking for someone like that. and. That was when I hit my biggest disappointment in uh, all these aspects because I didn't feel and neither could I confirm. Well, I did kind of confirm, but couldn't fully confirm that all those girls that I was talking to uh, were interested in something serious. They just, you know, wanted to have some fun, chill, hang out and, you know, be friends or uh, stuff like that. So I was disappointed quite hurt actually my ego was quite down because you know my idea was originally to get an arranged marriage then I decided that I'm gonna go and conquer that girl of my life myself and <laughs> figured out that it wasn't working exactly the same way as I expected it to <laughs> and so I was disappointed as you can imagine so I was still texting them all, but then I came back home. I was traveling, I was traveling around India at that time. I was working and I came back home. I think it all started in maybe May and I came back home in Feb. Whew. This Russian twists are hard. And I was talking to my parents. I was staying downstairs renting a place for my dad. And I just talking to them and my mom happened to ask me, she was like, oh, are you interested in someone? Uh, what you doing? And I don't know what bed bug bit me, but I told her all of my stories. I told her who I was texting and who I was hanging out. She was like, oh, okay, cool. So what's your take on that? And I was like, uh, sadly, it's really not working. So we got to figure something out. She was like, do you want me to help you? And I was like, um, I had to swallow my ego and be like, yeah, I actually do. Uh, so I spoke to her in more detail about everything that was happening. And, and you know, my plans and ideas. And I was like, why not give it a shot? Maybe she will be able to find that perfect person for me.
Oh boy. So then she started, well, she was actually telling me that she was looking for someone for a while now. And I was like, oh wow, cool. And so she threw me a number. She was like, oh, there's this girl that lives here. She's nice and all of that and I can talk to her. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Spoke to her, started messaging and it was all right. Everything was going fine. But again, due to my lack of knowledge and handling these kind of matters, lack of education or experience, uh, I kind of screwed that one up. Because <laughs> after a week, I was just like, um, I broke down. I didn't break down, but I was like, I need to break this down. And you don't understand the situation. What's going on? Like, <laughs> and so right after a week of just texting, I was like, um, <laughs> it's funny. I asked her if she was actually interested in me or she was interested in a serious relationship or uh, was all of this at all, you know, what was going on? I was like, I need some clarity. And she was like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not clear about it. But yeah, my idea was to be in a relationship maybe a year later. And so I was like, um, okay, right. So that's the answer that I needed. So I was like, it's not the person. <laughs> Instead of being like, I think as she expected or as any person in the right mind would say, okay, let's, let's make it work in a year or, you know, what not. So I threw that option off. Came back to my mom, told her all of that. She was like, uh, you stupid. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, one thing led to the other, and then, yeah. <sighs> Need to catch a breather. All right, I'll record next one. <sighs> yeah, so I kind of threw that option off. That girl, I don't know, hope she's not offended or not pissed at me still. I would imagine, I mean, if someone did that to me, I'd probably be a little pissed, but I hope there's no bad feelings there. But that led to me actually meeting my, at that point, future wife, which was, I guess, worth it all. little more and that was actually just the beginning of the relationship was really good already because I was like so my mom came back to me for the second time she was like oh so then this other girl her parents are cool and all of that and I was like okay send me your number and she was like no nah, no number for you go meet them in person I was like whoa hold on and in one sense, I was a little scared. And on the other hand, I was like, okay, this is actually a lot better because meeting someone and talking to them and, you know, being able to uh, communicate and feel those emotions in person is completely different than even on a video call. And that's kind of the idea of the relationship that I wanted. I never wanted to be with someone who is, uh, you know, living overseas or far away and, you know, you meet once a year or, be in a distant relationship and I wasn't, it wasn't my idea. So I was like, okay, cool. So I got ready on the specific day. I think it was a week later or something. Uh, I went to her parents' place where she was staying and you know, they were really nice. We sat with the whole family first and then her parents left and you know, we just spoke for an, around an hour. Uh, it was cool. I was surprised how cool she was and, you know, had a sense of humor and was really nice and cultured and just a really nice person. So that really attracted me, caught my attention and one thing led to the other and we're here, married for one and a half years. <laughs> um, yeah, I started hanging out more than uh, proposed to her in like six months and then within the first year of knowing each other, like properly we got married. 
And yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful journey. So my point of arranged marriage, in that sense, I think it's cool because uh, I was, well, uh, let me, let me, what's it called? I've, I'm lost. I don't have any even words to describe. I'm thinking how to formulate it properly and then tell it to you. Yeah, so what I liked about this whole idea and why I believe arranged marriage is good is if it's arranged this way. If it's arranged where, uh, first of all, you're coming with clear intentions and that's quite important. That's what uh, was very nice and very helpful because the other times I was talking to girls, it was like, you know, you're not sure if you're in the friend zone, you're not sure if you're with that right person, you're not sure what their plans are. But here, it's quite clear that the person is, uh, you know, that both of you are hanging out, getting to know each other, to later on get married and be in a serious relationship. Otherwise, why would the person say yes? Why would the parents say yes? They would speak to their kid first and then confirm that. Oh boy. Oh, I really haven't done abs in a long time. So that, that's what I liked the most about it. And uh, I think the second biggest benefit is that, you know, parents do all most of the legwork and uh, if you trust them and if you have developed a good relationship, which I know it's quite difficult, but if you have those two factors and you can trust your parents, then they can actually find a much more suitable person for you in character within family, you know, who has a full family, so there's a higher chance of you never divorcing, and other things like that, which uh, make it quite a task otherwise. And they can find the qualities that, you know, after living a whole life or most of their life and having real experience of what's important in marriage, they'll be able to find a person who has that and not just the beauty and the looks that, you know, I can say for myself, but I'm pretty sure all guys just look at, you know, the face and the body. That's the most important first. Then you fall in love and then you're like, oh, okay, there's some bad qualities or some things that I maybe don't like so much. Or, and then we'll work on that. We'll see how that goes. We'll try to fix it. Maybe later, maybe, uh, maybe earlier, maybe, you know. So stuff like that, which is very helpful. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I don't have any regrets. I think it was done really well. And I'm very grateful to my parents and to everybody who was part of this journey of mine. Uh, so yeah, quite interesting, I would say. So if you're fully against arranged marriage, I hope I changed your opinion a little bit at least of what arranged means. And um, yeah. and. The parents were supportive the whole way. They were like, after two or three months, after the first time, they were like, oh, so are you sure? I was like, no, I'm not sure that this is the person, but I'm willing to make, you know, the work to figure out if it is her or not. And, you know, after communicating and speaking and, you know, hanging out for some time, I think after like four, four months, I was like, okay, sure. I'm pretty sure this is the person. She has ticked all my, you know, boxes, all the fulfillments and the, what are they called? Things that I wanted from her. And yeah, I'm, I think I'm ready. So that's how it was. It wasn't like, okay, this is the person. You have to meet her. You have to get married. First you get engaged and one month you get married and that's it. No questions asked. No, it was a communication between us. Uh, between me and my wife, then my parents and her parents, and then between me and my parents, between her and her parents. It was, you know, everybody was communicating and that's what made it so uh, special and so good. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. I didn't think doing a day of abs is gonna be this difficult. Or maybe it's just that I haven't trained abs in forever.
because they're burning and I like, I feel like my abs are burning and can't do anything about it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. My story, two day part, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Things that I wanted to share about arranged marriage and how it happened to me. Just wanted to put it out there so it might, might help anyone change their mind or help them or just entertain you. So it doesn't magically happen, unfortunately, or fortunately, actually. That one gets abs, but you know, pretty good. I feel like this whole part has been worked and feel pretty good overall. We're gonna start it with our cut a few days in. Trying to eat less, that was my, that's my goal for the first 30 days to cut on my eating and eat the same amount of protein, less carbs, not be so sore, you know, because you start getting more sore when you start eating less and slowly, slowly, slowly decrease the sugar and other things so then I can uh, lose a few kilos of fat and be proper ripped. All right, peace out. Have a wonderful day.